Hello, good afternoon to everyone. Welcome to the international webinar, Empowering Investment for Social and Environment Change. Uh, today here with us, uh, with Anna Prata, she will make her own presentation. <laughs> so this, uh, this webinar is in the scope of the European project, Women and Money, that Investors Portugal it's uh, participating and is promoted by Euro team from Italy. So we will ask, uh, I will see all the participants that will arrive, but maybe uh, Anna, we can start with your presentation. So because there are already some persons here, so will be some participants will be better if you can start now. All right, all good for me. <laughs> so uh, hello everyone and thank you so very much for being here on a Friday afternoon. Uh, I will try my very best not to bore you to death, but uh, uh, I'll try, I'll try. So um, about this topic, I want to give you some considerations about why, uh, why I'm going to speak about this topic in particular. And maybe I will start by explaining that I'm actually a scientist. So um, I'm a, I have a master's in applied micro, uh, microbiology. And for, for what was the beginning of my career, I believed that I, I was going to change the world by reading a lot of papers and kind of going to the lab every single day and that will change the world. But I soon realized that for, uh, for starters, me, myself and I in a lab was not the, the best fit for my personality. It took me a while, but I got that. Uh, and second, it was a, a like a, a long journey, a true long of a journey to start with an idea in a lab and see it having impact in people. And so um, I started to wonder what I could do. And actually, when I was still doing my master's uh, on... I kind of discovered this world of entrepreneurship uh, by having a class about that. And I actually hated it in the, in the first few weeks. Then I realized it, I realized that it was a, a very, or it gave me a, a several important tools to grab the ideas from the science, grab the ideas from the lab and actually put it in having impact math much faster. Why? Because there was money involved. And that was the first time I learned that I, I realized that probably I needed to learn a little bit more about money if I wanted to have a little bit of impact in something. I started like that and years go by and I will not go, uh, go there right now. I, I founded my companies. I started to work as a consultant uh, in several areas, mostly connected to healthcare uh, and microbiology. But then I realized that there was an area that it was kind of missing in my in my vocabulary vocabulary sorry, and it was a circular economy. It it has this name actually. Uh, that that's been a journey, learning how to grab what we now know as waste and put it back as money. Uh, that's what I do, kind of for living in a part of my life. Uh, today, uh, apart from that, I'm also a teacher in the Faculty of Sciences for this area of entrepreneurship and innovation. And I have my own com uh, company co uh, connected to technology. With this being said, I'm not an expert on investing on several areas connected to impact, but I, I will try my very best to try to put it out there why is this important and why is this a huge opportunity actually? So what is going on right now that put myself as studying circular economy and becoming a climate fact ambassador and what is going on that keeps me up at night sometimes and I guess that can make the same for you. Sorry about that. Well, things are not pretty at the time. What, what I really want to say to you more than these numbers that I will show you is that according to some reports, the worst kind of situations, this one's here that you can see with the three uh, um, Celsius degrees uh, of increasing, 
it's already born the generation that will be extinct by climate change. Not suffer the effects because they're all, that's us, um, not being very in very bad, in a very bad place, extinct, like there is no conditions for living. Well, I'm 30 years old. When I was five, I started to learn a little bit about climate change and maybe that will be a problem for my grandchildren. When I was 15, I was told that maybe it will be a very strong problem for my children. Today, I'm learning that I might be living when this is bad. And the thing is that when we listen to this, when we when we actually see the numbers, it's almost so oh, it's so overwhelming that it takes a while for us to to actually try to do something. And what is going on that people are trying to do? So to big numbers, straightforward. Uh, there is a, an international agreement connected to put this average temperature below two um, two Celsius degrees. The, the very goal is 1.5, and we will suffer. It's not about not suffering, it's about surviving. And the thing is that there is not a lot of people putting this out yet, but up to 2030, if we are not there on the 1.5, you'll see that these conversations will start coming out because I know it can sound extreme, but please do go and check on your TV the amount of people that are already suffering and dying from things that are connected to climate change and climate impact. Also, we have the sustainable development goals uh, that was that were uh, that were kind of gathered so that we were able to have. Uh, targets that were both economical, social, and environmental um, doable. But the thing is that in the middle of all of this, what can we do? Because it can sound too big, it can sound too, too much of a lost cause. And we choose not to listen, and we choose not to do something, because on a daily basis, it seems like there is nothing too wrong with it. And then there is a fire that it's strange. And then there are rains that are strange and we keep with this. But there is no turning back from this now. And the thing is that when we look into what caused this, that, that's why the, the discussion starts to be very, very uh, interesting. Uh, we tend to, put the blame on the companies, put the blame on pollution, and we are absolutely right. But it is my conviction that they are also the solution because it either gives money back or it will take us too long to implement. It might not sound pretty to say, it might not sound even fair, but it, this is not about fairness. This is about struggle. This is about surviving. And it is my professional belief that that's the goal and that's the way. So that's why we are here today. What is going on uh, considering investing and considering uh, having profit connected to this area in order for us to kind of having the future. So soft, soft stuff. When we start speaking about this, uh, we need to make kind of a point between traditional investing and impact investing. And the, the first word that will come up is sustainability. When you speak about impact investing, we are speaking about sustainability. And this is a word that we can listen for a while in every single project that we can come up with uh, at this time every single project will say to you that it's sustainable. Well, 
for us to kind of think a little bit about this, we need to go deep into the definition of sustainability. And it goes something like this. It's about consuming the resources and in applying the resources without compromising the future of that environment. I think it's simple enough that we can get. And actually it can come up to this, we can, we can have a whole conversation just about the term sustainability, but I will try to, to put it in a simple way. Like we can use the resources, we can apply the resources, but we cannot go too deep that the resource is completely out for future generations. And it's just kind of, yeah, it sounds logical, but then I, I, I need to, I need you to, to listen to this very carefully. If we go by that definition, stuff like killing these cuties over here can be sustainable. The thing is, if we go just by this definition, we are not looking into a lot of different things connected. To the definite to the actual term uh, of not sustainability but environmental. And it's actually sad to see that there are a lot of projects connected to the term sustainable that are using this term, so using the resources without compromising the future to present business that are increasing pain and are increasing suffering around the world. What we are looking here, we, you cannot, or it, it might be possible that you are not very touched by the baby seal. I don't know what is wrong if that's happening, but well, it's okay. Just a few of them are killed. It's completely um, certified. They are completely marked. So it's kind of okay. But the same, the exactly same principle can be applied in situations like this. If we don't look into what the resources and the, what the impact that we are looking for is doing to people, to the environment and to the animals themselves, how can we dare to say that it's sustainable? And this is going on right now. So when we look into the actual definition of impact investing, just like traditional investing, it has to have financial returns, but there are two different things or two more things that have to be connected with positive social impact and positive environmental impact. Now, nice to hear, easy to say, how does we how does it work? How do we measure this? It starts with an idea. Okay. It's the idea of having a circle when you put what is your very nice space to grow. Uh, we are looking to the soft green and then you start to define or to define, sorry, uh, what are the values that you cannot go on under the circle, which is the social foundation which means that below that, you are exploring people. You are prejudicing people for having your business. And if you go outside the circle, you are going to prejudice the environment in order to have your business. This is kind of the, the, the first idea of something that it's called donut economics. It's connected to circular economy. Donald circular is a, the conversation. The conversation is a lot about this. Uh, but this is actually a tool that we can use to measure the impact, the positive impact, both on social and environmental. Every single um, like triangle that you see here in the in the middle will be defined with uh, with target measure uh, with measurable values that we defined before the project is put it out and the outside it's going to work just the same. What are the values that we are measuring and looking out to see if your, if our project is actually sustainable in an environmental and social way. And of course it has to make money because otherwise we are not going to have the donut for long. So there is no point. When we look at this, this is a kind of a tool for the companies to work and for us to actually look into how to measure 
impact, which is a kind of the very first thing that can come up with uh, to mind. How do we know? How do how do we kind of split the the ideas and see if they are having impact? And it's out there a tool that might help. It's not actually a tool. It's um, um, a criteria or a, a, a group of criteria. So they are called Environmental, Social and Government Funds, SEG. And what we are doing now is trying to define when we look into this criteria, what are we expecting to see from this company? When we look into the environmental part, we are looking to a compromise about putting down the carbon emissions or the carbon credit market, which is something very cool that we are going to speak a little bit in further of this uh, webinar. Uh, how are they imagine, imagine, uh, managing sorry, waste and what are their conservation practices? Are they contributing in somehow, uh, somehow? Then we are going to look to the social ones. What are the programs that they have considering diversity and inclusion? What are the labor rights that are on the table? And of course, connected to this is kind of implicit in the, in the system. What is the social responsibility that they are putting out there? For the governments, um, when we look into the company, we are looking especially for transparency. We are looking for ethics and we are looking for the data that show us that they are targeting corruption because as you can imagine, it's not easy to be sustainable in all those criteria that we were speaking about before. So there is a lot of uh, something that we call greenwashing. And greenwashing, greenwashing it's been around for a while. Uh, it's about companies that present projects that sound sustainable, that, si that sound kind of environmentally closed and uh, sorry, not closed, but concerned, but it's not more, much more than a marketing movement. This is a way of thinking a strategy to actually see what the companies are putting out there. And just for you to have an idea, there are uh, actually funds that define the criteria and the companies apply to be part of these funds to be invested. Um, and it's growing. It's growing because people are starting to see value into the security of being part of these funds. It's so difficult to evaluate the actual impact and the actual sustainable, uh, the actual sustainability of a company that people prefer or the companies are looking for being part of these funds that kind of putting them a um, quality uh, certification that, yeah, we care, we are there, and that's why they are growing fast. Just for, just for, for you to have an idea, uh, this is a, a market uh, that in 2020, it was around this value that you can see here. And there is a reason why I put the, the value from 2020. As you can imagine, the one from 2022 is bigger. But this is very important because this was the first time that we look into what happens when, when, the, when the environmental uh, and uh, when, the, when the actual nature works and we cannot do nothing but stay at home and pray, pray that science works. Um, I don't know if you know this, but for COVID-19, so the, the, the pandemic that hit, it was not something that science didn't predict. Science was already waiting for it. It was not about uh, an hypothesis is what it was about when it was going to happen. Um, and yet, and yet we didn't know what kind of virus was going to put this, remember microbiology, sorry for this moment, but we knew, we knew that it was all in place for something like a pandemic to hit. And it was the first time that we could see what happens when the, the whole world at the same time sees that we have no power over nature. And yes, projects with impact growed and investment in that growed as well. Because we were, we are all in this 
little planet together and we cannot go away from it yet yet we let's have faith in nature and in science but the thing is it's growing but where to invest because if we look this um into or if you look at this as we want to have impact and we have to and, and we want to actually put our money out into projects that are putting themselves in front of what is going to be the the needs out there we have to have some kind of not rules but strategy so i think this can apply to every single thing considering investing but i will try to put my my thoughts about why this is here about when we speak about portfolio diversification i think it's kind of obvious that we should not put everything in the same but what i meant or what i mean with this is about not putting everything into the same type of technology into the same field because the projects that are connecting to managing waste food waste are not the same and are not going to evolve the same at the same speed that the one considering water and this is something that we have to look into um of course this apply to every single step uh, but here is of vital importance to see the science behind it because we need those projects to grow faster the only way that we have to do that in my opinion is to make them having a profit and not waiting for public funds to finance all of this because some of them will fail so when we look into this when we look into what sectors uh, are going to be there the most no doubt energy is on top of the list as a trend and it makes sense water water management will be one of them uh healthcare because we are going to start having problems with diseases that we are not prepared for education because if we stop education we are going to to be in in in, in short or being short noted of the minds put in place to solve the problem because there will come the day when we have to have all these minds in, in place for us to think about solutions so education and when you speak about food food it's going to be a problem we are more than 8 billion there there are, we are kind of two decades away i think it's something like like that to be in the at the same time in the planet living and breathing at the same time the exact number or the approximate not sure, not actually exact but the approximate number the approximate number of the total number of people that lived in the planet before that just imagine from stone age to now all those people at the same time on earth we are going to be living in that moment probably it, it yeah i told you that the conversation was hard to hear um but when we, when we speak about this i really believe that we need to take an action and that takes me to the, my last point which is the direct investment versus investing in funds take action or considering part of the, your strategy to take a natural uh, active action uh sorry active action, active uh, role uh, in projects that you have can uh, um uh, or connect both connections or knowledge about besides putting your money in funds or thinking about funds there are companies that are working now uh with crowdfunding solutions to projects that are only connected to impact investing and this is a way of putting money into people's hands that you are not connected to the area you not you don't know uh, much about it but if you know go in and invest directly go and say i want to have a part in it because we need to speed up that's the thing and everything that we can do to speed up the process we should be doing right now whatever we do about 
our strategy and I know I, I no one to tell you what's the strat what the strategy should be. I'm telling you my best knowledge about what I did when I when I look into wh where my knowledge is best applied and where my money is best applied. Uh, but at the same time, it's also about what are the obstacles that you might face both as a person that has a company or a person that wants to invest because they are kind of the same. And there is a huge problem measuring this impact. We spoke about this before. Um, and easy ways to see this is to see uh, if there is a report speaking about post profit and growth. We need that part. And uh, then is the company serious about how it's going to put their carbon emissions down? And what's the place that they are they are going or what's the strategy they are going for? And there is also a, a data that is very interest, inter, interesting. It's about the number of lives that are impacted. This will tell you that there is a serious report behind it, not empty words about recycling, because the recycling, <laughs> recycling is kind of, you know, the, the last thing you have a whole book. To, to read and then you go and, and read not the last um, not the last page but the cover and you say yeah we are doing a lot no 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 recycling is the very the very minimum so there are a few data that are important um also there is um there is a data uh connected to something that is here on the donut and it's the political part what are the legislations that the company are working on uh, or working with to try and work with their waste management? Because I don't know if you know this, but for instance, in Portugal, we have a lot of struggles considering le legislation to work with waste and put it in the market as a value, uh, as a raw uh, material again. This is something that microbiology people uh, try to do a lot. And it's very hard because once it's categorized as waste, it's uh, uh, sometimes it's easier to start from the beginning than to go and try to move that certification as a waste. And this is a small data that can actually help you to see if the company is trying to do something that for me it's important. More than putting checkpoints on sustainability, are they thinking about how are they going to make money out of it? Because this is the thing. If you learn how to make money out of this process, you are putting speed into the impact that you want to put out there. Again, you this can be an idea that not everyone is going to agree. I respect that, but it is my point of view. If it gives money, it will put the speed that we need to actually have impact and survive the oh, way, I think it's a, a a fair point on my on on my behalf. But speaking about the commitment of the companies, I I didn't want to kind of start the, the final part of this presentation without speaking about some points that are here. We are already been through the no greenwashing uh, message and. Uh, the actual point about the carbon uh, emissions, there is a very strong and very impressive report about uh, from Microsoft about actual measures that they are going to take to put this down. And you are going to say, Anna, Microsoft is a huge company. It's normal that they have that. Yeah, the bigger they are, the, the worse is, or the bigger the challenge. And there is a very, it's a, an actual good report with a lot of detail about what they are trying to do or what they are compromised to do. So if you want, just take a look at what they are proposing to, to put in the document as a, well, I don't, I don't want to say an example, but as a, a good way of starting to look for data and to look how the, these kind of reports look like. Then there is this, Corporate social responsibility. It's the the putting out there what the company is doing to benefit the society that they are putting 
the, the products in it or the, 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 the workers that they have to. And it's not a mandatory thing, but the leading companies are the ones putting this outside the companies that people actually have uh, or the companies that actually have a good um, um, ranking uh, with happiness from the workers are doing this. So it's kind of an indirect data that you can also look for. It's kind of obvious. Are people happy working there or not? Because this usually it's kind of a package and it helps to look to this. And when you speak about sustainable innovation, well, sorry, not sorry. Tesla is still amazing when we speak about sustainable innovation. Um, it's facing some struggles right now, uh, but when we look about, or when we look into the challenge that they had considering uh, electric cars and what they did, uh, can see uh, uh, what what they did uh, with with investing and very smart investor investing connected to the batteries of the car. This is a, a um an amazing an amazing case study to see what they did. Uh, it's here not uh, it's not here as a go and invest in Tesla. Well, I mean go and invest in Tesla, but uh, it's. Mostly because what they did and the team that they have or the science team that they have uh, was very um, proactive in putting into the world the results and the, the protocols that they followed, the rules that they followed, considering sustainable innovation. And they are actually amazing to read. So, challenge. We have been through this a lot. Uncertain financial results. Yes just like any traditional investing. So we are going to move from that. Lack of metrics and standards. This is a very strong problem. It's also a very good moment to have an opportunity because there are a few tools that are not mandatory yet, but can help us understanding if those data can be compared or not. They are both here. So in power, um, the, in the GR, GRI, GRI, sorry, uh, it's a platform or it's a company that is starting to work, an association, I think, uh, starting to work with actually uh, matching data from different companies and starting to see uh, if they are comparable or not. They have a lot of metrics to, uh, to, to work with. And the impact management product, management product is also working into uni uh, universal metrics for us to look for when we are targeting impact. But I think mostly the cultural, the cultural, uh, cultural so, sorry, resistance, it's something to consider. Remember the conversation about the daily basis? So the companies are working, the money is flowing. Climate change is a pain in, in a very sensitive place, but we can deal with it. And the politics will solve this and stuff like that. Yeah, this, this is a very, very big problem because internal resistance can stop innovation. And if you are not looking into the importance of teasing this part, we are wasting time and technology needs to evolve in the way that we need to do this is to actually invest into ideas and to stop this resistance because it matters. It actually matters. On the base of all of this is scaling challenges. And we all know, I think a little bit uh, about how how difficult it can be to scale up a business, but scale up technologies and scale up, um, uh, I mean, physical technologies. If it, is, if it is software, it's a completely different conversation, but I don't know if you notice, we are speaking here about a lot of ideas that to have impact, we are speaking about mechanical, uh, biomedical and healthcare uh, technology, which will take time. 
And the only way that we have to scale up this is to put money there. It's to actually see if the technologies can be connected or not. This is a very interesting area to study, um, which is kind of starting to look up uh, with um, in, um, artificial intelligence to all the, um, the, sorry, wait, wait, I'll give you the, the, the name, all the patents that are already being published in the world and can they connect to different perspectives, into different perspectives? Are we looking into all that we know about water um, uh, 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 des uh, desalinization uh, at the same time or not? Uh, there are machines starting to work around this and actually they are very cool projects, but they need money into their hands. Otherwise, we do have the technology, but we are not scaling them and we are not making them faster or putting them into the world fast enough. And this is a very <laughs> a very frustrated way of seeing it, but it is true. When you look, if you look into um, what is Google um, uh, or on Google, what what they are, what is going on into the investigation fields? We have a lot of projects uh, that, on a small scale, they could make. They are at, uh, they are reaching massive result, but we are still looking into that barrier between small scale, lab scale, and putting that in the market. This is the place when we are needing in desperate, desperate need of putting money because we need to speed up all this technology that we have been through and, and we have been working in the last 10 years out there in the market. And it cannot take us 15 years like the previous cycle. It has to be faster because 15 years from now, we are going to be suffering a lot more than we are already. And some countries that are already facing stuff like wildfires, or like never before, or uh, or are dealing with the um, with dries, like they are no precedent. It will not be better in a few years. And there is there is actual technology to help on these situations. Either it's going to grow up fast enough or not. The best way for them to grow up is to make money. And that's why when we come up with conclusions for this conversation, of course, we have this major point of impact investment drives innovation, but it's also about responsibility. It's also about looking into what we want and putting the pressure on the projects and saying, hey, you need to learn how to make money out of this because this is also in lack. We are looking, we are still looking into universities and we are still looking into um, uh, research as something that will take 10 years or 15 years to have impact. We don't have 15 years. Oh, I mean, we have, but we are going to be in a very bad situation in 15 years. So speeding up and telling this project, hey, you need to make money faster. You need to leave the lab. It's kind of my job. That's why I'm putting this point so, so eager right now. But we need more bridges coming with this. And when we look into what innovation looks like and what the innovation means in these fields is not about having a pretty cool car or a pretty cool technology. It's about impacting people's lives and nature. But we are speaking about people now. So it's about looking into the, not the future generations, it's about looking to the kids that are five to seven years old. They are the generation that can be extinct by the climate change. They are already in school. Just take a look at them. The next time that you that you go by um, a school, look because it can be a challenge. When we speak about our individual responsibility, 
I think it's very important for us to, to look into what we want with this, not to blame us, ourselves too much uh, about our individual consumption, because that, that can be a very ugly path, but to align what we are looking for for our future and what we believe it's important with our consumption choices. This is something that I, I really think it's um, important to, to think. Now, I'm going to try to put the video. Uh, I, there, is, there is a video, oh, well, there is a, a bunch of videos about climate change and climate uh, and the consequences of climate change. But this one, it's very interesting in the way that the, the, the presenter speaks. So for this to work, uh, I need to know if the video is working uh, good on your side. So Teresa, please put your thumb up if the video is okay. Huh? We'll try, we'll try. No sound, Anna. Dijma? Sorry. Sem som, sem som. Wait, we'll try. I told you that this could be the the moment, the moment. Uh, uh, well, I didn't put the box share sound, so that's solved. Let's try from the beginning. Give me a second now. If you condense the Earth's life span into. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Let's try this another way. Fun fact Planet Earth is 4.5 billion years old. Mankind, about 140,000 years old. Let me put that in perspective. If you condense the Earth's lifespan into 24 hours, that's one full day, then we have been here on this planet for. Drum roll, please. Three seconds. Three seconds, and look what we've done. We have modestly named ourselves Homo sapiens, meaning wise man. But is man really so wise? Smart, yes, and it's good to be smart, but not too smart for your own good. Yes, we have split the atom. Yes, we build clever machines that navigate the universe in search of new homes, but at the same time, those atoms we split created nuclear warfare. In our quest to explore the galaxy, rejects and neglects the home that we have here now, so no, that cannot be wisdom. Wisdom is different. While intelligence speaks, wisdom listens, and we willingly covered our ears to Mother Nature's screams and closed our eyes to all of her help-wanted signs. Wisdom knows that every action has an equal and opposite reaction, so if we were wise, we would not be shocked when we see storms that are stronger than ever before, or more drought, hurricanes, and wildfire than ever before, because there's more pollution than ever before, more carbon, more trees cut down than ever before. At a record pace, we have increased the extinction of animals by 1,000 times the normal rate. What a feat. In the next 10 to 100 years, every beloved animal character in every children's book is predicted to go extinct. Lion gone, rhinos gone, tiger, gorilla, elephant, polar bear gone in three seconds. Species that have been here longer than us will be gone because of us in this three seconds. In an existence shorter than a Vine video, we turn the circle of life into our own personal conveyor belt. Somebody, anybody help. We were given so much, the only planet in this solar system with life. I mean, we are one in a million. No, actually, scientifically, we are one in a billion, trillion, trillion. That's a one followed by 33 zeros. And I don't want to get too spiritual, but how are we not a miracle? We are perfectly positioned to the sun so we don't burn, but not too distant so we don't turn to ice. Goldilocks said it best, we are just right. This paradise where we are given medicine from trees, not coincidentally, but because like the song says, we are family, literally. Everything, every species is connected genetically from the sunflower to the sunfish. And this is what we must recognize before it's too late because the real crisis is not global warming, environmental destruction, or animal agriculture. It is us, 
These problems are symptoms of us, byproducts of us, art in a reflection. Loss of connection has created this misdirection. We have forgotten that everything contributes to the perfection of Mother Nature. Corporations keep us unaware and disconnected, but they have underestimated our strength. Contrary to popular belief, millions are waking up out of their sleep, seeing our home being taken right up under our feet. We cannot allow our history to be written by the wicked, greedy, and loony. It is our duty to protect Mother Nature from those who refuse to see her beauty. Call me crazy, but I believe we should have the right to eat food that's safe with ingredients we can pronounce. Drink water that is clean, marvel at trees, breathe air free of toxins. These are natural rights, not things that can be bargained for in Congress. See, they want you to feel powerless, but it has been said that something as small as the flutter of a butterfly's wing can cause a typhoon halfway around the world but when enough people come together, we too will make waves and watch the world into a new era filled with love and connection, freedom for all without oppression. But it is up to you, yes, you watching this behind this screen to make the effort because time is of the essence and only together can we make it to the fourth second. like to actually open up the, the presentation now and ask you if you have any questions. Uh, I just want to actually add uh, something that uh, there is a reason why I showed this video is not for us to be completely uh, overwhelmed by, by the situation and to come up with an environmental uh, conversation or so, is to remember ourselves that when we speak about impact, when we speak about money and investing money into having impact, it's part of the solution. It's not part of the problem. And with that being said, I'm all yours. It was great. I still <laughs> saying that it was great. I think that um, that must be one of the talks from all of us for every day. And I listened so many times that is not anymore the time of pure technology, but is the time of humanity of things where the technology must be centered uh, or focus in the human well-being and sustainability, uh, like a technology more human-centric. Is, is this is this the, the vision, Anna? Well, uh yes but yes but there is there is a line that you know that the human the, the human perspective and the, the, that image of being close to one another and to impact into people's life i would be very i think it was it would be very beautiful of of me to say yeah that's exactly what we are looking for but the thing is that we are living in the same moment that people that do not believe that perspective have a lot of power and a lot of money. So if we go only from that perspective, if we struggle and we fight for that perspective, we don't have enough time, in my opinion. That's why I, I actually put um, I put uh, uh, my, 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 my point into looking how to center business that are already in place into making money out of having impact uh it's not it's not easy as you can imagine but if you do that if you show an actual financial economical uh financial or economical advantage of being more impactful uh it will be faster because there is money involved so mm -hmm. i believe it's not the the beautiful answer that i would like to give but it's my my actual opinion about this. Perfect. <laughs> so do um, we have an, another question for um, any of the investors here present? So is the responsibility now of the investors must be look for investments in projects that have a scope in social and climate impact? No. <laughs> You know that I, I'm not actually sure that there is their responsibility. We are free of choosing, but the thing is, there is an, a there is a huge um, um, opportunity connected to that. 
because if we took a step forward into this way of thought, when things go bad, money will be placed mm -hmm. into that technology, even if it is too late. We have seen this with COVID. Yeah. We, we, we should have, we, we need to pay attention what happened because money was put into projects that had no uh, actual um, uh, hypothesis or very good hypothesis to grow uh, in the way that we needed, in the speed that we needed, but we were desperate and we will be desperate again. So that, that's the thing. No one is forced to do that. I don't, I don't believe that way of thought and I don't believe that way of seeing things. People that are putting money are the ones with the responsibility. They are not. They are free to choose where they put their money. But there is an opportunity. And I believe that we all want to be here in a few years and our children to grow and our grandchildren to grow. But it's not mandatory, it's a choice. Um, uh, hi, I I'm sorry. Hi. Uh, I don't uh, I don't have a, like a question, but I have a comment. Um, mm -hmm. It's like I, um, in Austria, there's a startup uh, they just uh, launched a better um, version of a platform um, where they um, want to show like um, sustainable investment um, possibilities. Uh, it's called Money Care, and um, they it's like a platform where you can like look up companies um, where you want to like um, buy uh, stocks or whatever, and then uh, they show they um, show you like. Um, how sustainable they are in terms of climate, society, but also gender. Like, for instance, um, like um, how is like the, the the ratio of men and women on the board of the company, for instance. So it is actually a I, I can share it with you in the chat. Please, one. please. You know that actually that's a very a good point. Um, you know that in for instance here we have a, a platform that goes more or less the same. So it's called uh, Go Parity. And the thing is that the, the pretty cool thing about Go Parity and is all the projects that are there first. If they are there, you are already teased by this. This is connected to something meaningful. But then they kind of categorized all the projects in a way that you can compare them. And that's why uh, uh, the, I, I remember uh, this example when we were speaking. But thank you for your comment because it's, it's, I will check. Obrigada, Sara. <laughs> Algum comentário, questão? Well, I think it was uh, quite uh, interesting your presentation, but I always have the... It is, I think it's clear to everybody, or most everybody here in the, the West, let's call it on the more developed countries, that it's necessary to have a, a, a social perspective when investing. Most of our funds are also regulated and uh, are rules to be followed. And these rules are always going into the direction of the ESG. But nevertheless, we are not the only ones in the world and the world is very complicated. Mm -hmm. We see every day there is always a surprise. So how can we balance these things? Of course, we can do as, as the best as we can, but there's not. How do you see that? How can we balance that? How can we share that? Because it's a question of. I, I agree that someone in in India that has nothing to eat, nothing to, well, has a different approach to things. That's natural, huh? Or so, how can we deal with this the diversity in the world in this sense? Diversity. Mm -hmm. On development yeah well i think that's that's a huge question but i can yeah, tell you, it is. i can tell you that it's one of the perspectives that keeps me up at night and i was so teased by that question or by that thought that i did something a year ago uh i i i felt like i didn't know enough about the world to 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 connect my thoughts about how how is this going to impact people because we are very fortunate here it might not seem like it but but we yeah, are yeah we are for sure yeah. we, but sometimes we, we 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 lose sight of this but we are and you know what i i actually took um, a, a trip 
and it was I was a, for a month in Africa. So I started in South Africa and I did uh, like the South of Africa, Namibia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Zambia, and so far. And the, the, I learned a lot of things. Uh, I was very connected to the environmental con uh, concerns, but it was only in the end of the tour that I realized something. I saw a lot of poor people. It, there is no doubt in it. Um, but I only saw misery, like deep, teased misery in big cities. And yeah, this but that's true. This tells me something. It is we we are not or for me, it's not right to try to to look into into people that are, are actually well established and say to them, well, there is something that will make impact in your life, but can actually, if you look into the very the, the most developed countries, the most developed cities, that's where poverty will hit. Uh, so it's not for me, it was kind of simple, it, it's not simpler, but it was cleaner in my mind that we cannot impact the, the, the world as, as, as one piece, but people are struggling in the places where money hits. So either we look into this in the way that money is the problem, or we are going to invest in, in social problems precisely on those, on those places. Um, I, I think it's a, uh, this is a kind of a, philo a philosophy a kind of philosophy. Uh, philosophy. It's almost a philosophy. Uh, philo I, I, philosophy. <laughs> okay. Uh, but the thing is, it is there are things that we cannot control. We cannot control for a political or private in uh, uh, interest connected to pol uh, political movements. We can say something about it, and this is a very Portuguese thing. We don't say enough about it. And we don't use our voices. Uh, we are very uh, satisfied or res resigned to not saying enough. And sometimes it starts like this. And finally, on my very personal view, we change the future when we teach our perspective. That's why I split my life in two or three and I'm giving classes now because there is no way we can change all people that are on on top. But if you start on the other part, maybe we will be enough. But I don't know. I I actually don't know. But this is my very my or my best contribution for that way of thought. Well, I think that we will all will have good insights to think about. And this is, it was very interesting as a food for thought and to try to have a better approach to the to this topic. I don't know if there is more questions, Teresa. I don't know. I don't know, but I think that the, like uh, we- well, Six uh, o'clock on a Friday afternoon. Yes, <laughs> yes. I think that we can finish. Uh, but the idea is that the investing in social and environment change can be must be a commitment for each one of us okay for everyone and if it's already if it's a commitment it's already good <laughs> and then we need to pass the commitment <laughs> and this webinar is our part from investors portugal that we'll try to do to the subject and we'll do much more i will we'll try to do much more for sure uh so um for now, I just want to say thank you, Anna. It was great. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed it. It was very nice. And we'll share this video very soon in one week. I think that will be already available all these webinars in the website of the project. We'll share with all the participants. Uh, so thank you very much, everyone, to that have been here today with us in a Friday afternoon, <laughs> and to Anna that it was great. So I don't know if you want to finish with a final talk or something. <laughs> uh, away. Uh, well, I can. Uh, I think it's um, 
actually about not that I don't I really don't like it. When when we put the thing in the responsibility of people that are investing, uh, and we say we you need to do this because it, it's kind of your fault mm -hmm. if you are not doing no. you are more than if you are you are free to do what you what you want. And I, I don't like that way of thought because I think it it will come up with nothing if you if you go there worse than nothing. It will put the money into the people that or into the projects that know how to sell sustainability instead of actually having impact. And this was kind of a few thoughts that I, I wanted to bring uh, out, like what what can we look for? We're not going to do like I would not make a presentation about how, how do we evaluate the carbon credits uh, situation or the carbon, uh, carbon footprint, but seeing this difference for me, it's one of the major points in, in this presentation, just with a, a few notes about what impact means, what sustainability actually means, what, what can we look for in this kind of report. I hope it was useful somehow. Well, thank you very much. It Thank was you. Great. Thank you very much. Uh,